Not yet. Uh, it'll be open when they come in here. Yeah. Just a few reminders, no flash photography is allowed. Please silence your cell phones and no recording is allowed, no video recording is allowed on any device. For those of you in the media work area, Michigan players will be Moritz Wagner, DJ Wilson, and Derek Walton, Jr. Michigan is on its way, so that means that the Michigan locker room is open. And as a reminder, uh, the format will be an opening statement from Coach Beeline and then questions for anyone for the remaining 12 minutes. Okay, uh, we will begin with an opening statement from Coach Beeline, and then we'll go to questions for anybody. Coach? I'm a little, a little damp right now, but uh, our guys, we started a tradition of, of getting, taking a shower, I guess, without going in the shower after good wins, and uh, 
uh, it didn't, it's not stopping. But they're so proud of these guys. The end of the end of the first half, I thought, was a defining moment for our team in this particular game. We could have approached that differently. We were coming back, shot clocks down. They nail a three. Uh, I think uh, they came down, back down again, nailed another three, and all, then all of a sudden we got a foul, and they get two more. We're down eight at half. So. Uh, a younger a team that's not as experienced or doesn't have the po poise that we had would come back and try and win it all right away. And two, but we won every four-minute period <coughs> until we got uh, we got ahead in the game. And just by playing in those little increments made a big difference. Great uh, coach is helping me. I'm assistant coach with great game, game plan. Billy Dylan holding them to 69 points. I can't tell you how many plays Jeff and Saudi suggested that worked. And uh, it was a great win, team win for everybody. Okay, hey, questions, please. Raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you right away, right up here. Hoops. Wait, wait Hoops. for the mic. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Uh, John, you, you had 40. How are you? Hi. <laughs> uh, you had 40 points in the paint tonight. You obviously made a decision to take the ball inside when they looked yep. to try to take away your threes. Yeah, it, they were, you know, when you, you can't do both of them if you got a team, and we work on it a lot. You wouldn't believe how we work on it. People think we're a three-point shooting machine. You can't do that anymore unless you can drive the ball. Or both DJ and Mo, we've worked hard. Saudi Washington, great influence on these two to, to play one-on-one -on -one in the post because people are just sticking with our shooters. And we always haven't been able to do that. We got to do that a little bit with Jordan Morgan uh, during some good years and, and Mitch McGarry a little bit. But we, and Deshaun Sims, we haven't been able to do that in many of our years yet. We can do that now, and it's a big uh, game changer, as well as Derek Walton and Zach Irvin and Muhammad not settling for jump shots. They, they can take the ball to the basket and finish, and we work on it endlessly. They've been working on it for four years. Right here. Uh, this is for DJ. <laughs> You're like a point guard now as far as get, getting to the free throw line, knocking them down, second straight outing. You've got to take us through the mental process with that kind of pressure, 18,000 people watching. What do you go through to nail them like, as you did? Question oh. for DJ. I don't feel any really. Um, everybody's confident in my ability to go down there and knock down the free throws down the stretch. Um, I'm confident in myself, so that's really all I need. Um, I, th I think yesterday uh, or two days ago when we played Oklahoma State and I iced the game with the free throws down the stretch, I think that definitely helped me. Um, so when I went up to the line, I just had the utmost confidence. Right here. Coach Beeline, question, are you surprised with the six turnovers and are you surprised that University of Louisville did not extend its defense earlier? No, I mean, we only averaged nine a game. I mean, and so uh, I didn't know in, in short prep, you know, we were expecting anything. But we tried to prepare for all of it. But again, if you open up the floor, people don't press much anymore because you know what it gives you? A wide open three at the other end, which we do at five positions. So that's why the, the, you know, John wouldn't press for years. You couldn't do that today. You just cannot do that. So I, I, I'm sure there was something to do with that. And uh, at the same time, they really played really good. We could not get used to their length at all on offense. They switched a lot of screens. We had to settle down for a minute to, to realize we could take the ball to basket if we changed our spacing. Right here, Pat. Uh, question from Mo. Uh, given the defense they were playing on Derek and the switches that, that gave you those mismatches, <coughs> what was your mindset about being aggressive and attacking the basket? Question for Moritz. Well, like Coach B said already, um, we've been working a lot on that switching defense, just getting the ball in the post and being aggressive down there as well. So um, I think it's just I'm very confident because of our practice, because of the work we all put in, and um, it paid off today. Right here in the back. Morgan, did you, did you have a sense going into the game, to, based on the way they might play you guys, that you'd have to play a big role, or did you just kind of develop as it happened? Question for Moritz. Nah. Um, I, I just let the game come to me. Um, don't force anything and see what happens. And today, yeah, I got a, cu a couple of easy ones early, and therefore my confidence level was high. So I guess that was the case. Right over here. Yeah, for DJ and Mo, there was a minute there where you guys kind of embraced near the basket and hugged each other. What did you guys say to each other there? What was going through your emotions? DJ? Um, me and Mo, we're real close, um, especially off the court. Room, uh, we're roommates. So um, I don't know. We just got, like I keep saying, the utmost confidence in one another. Um, uh, I don't know. We kind of, our play is kind of contagious out there on the floor. Um, I feed off his energy, he feeds off mine. So. Uh, down the stretch when we pulled out the victory. Um, 
I was just as happy as I could uh, possibly believe, be. And um, I seen Mo right there, so I just embraced it. Mo? Yeah, um, like DJ said, we're very close. And um, we work so much together. We do similar things. So it's, 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 it's beautiful to see each other being successful. And um, very hap happy that the team in general could be successful today. Questions, please? Right here. Derek, you had been having a tough shooting night, and then could you describe that last drive, that, uh, that big play you made? Did you feel, okay, I'm taking this, or did you think about giving it up to somebody else? Derek? Um, no. I, you know, I, I felt every shot I shot today was a great shot. Um, and I know Coach B would yell at me if I, you know, d you know start to defer. So uh, I, I just kept screaming to my guys. Uh, you know, after they made play after play after play, uh, I just told them I helped bring it home. And, um, you know, I hit the shot, I hit the jump shot, and then I hit the layup. And um, you know, they looked at me and just, you know, like I said, I feed off those guys. It gave me so much confidence. So uh, I know if I would have stopped shooting, they would have been mad at me. So, you know, just to make the shot down the stretch just felt like a big relief. Questions, please? Right here, <coughs> Steve. This is for uh, Derek and DJ. Of all the things that Mo gave you guys out there today, what do you think he did best? Derek? <laughs> um, he just, he, he's got this mentality where, you know, he just wants to make a play. And, um, you know, we feed off him so much because he plays with so much energy. And, um, <coughs> you know, he get caught, you know, he just, get, he just makes the right play at all the time. You know, not all the time, but, you know, he has, you know, the cojones to go make a big place. So, uh, you know, we just feed off him because he got, you know, he just, he's not afraid of anything. So uh, that's pretty much what I, it's just his it's mentality. DJ? <clears throat> um, Mo just has the mentality of, uh, I don't know, he's not scared of the moment. And I think you definitely saw that today um, down the stretch when he got the ball. Uh, he knew he was going to make a play. And we were just sitting there watching him. Um, and he executed well down the stretch. And uh, I think that was just big. It was a big confidence boost for Mo. Um, yeah. Right back here. For Coach Beeline, uh, it seemed like during the regular season, there was a perception about the Big Ten um, maybe having a weak year, a down year. Um, three teams in the Sweet 16 now. What, did you feel during the regular season that it was stronger than it been getting credit for? You know, and, and I don't know how they would judge how teams were, but we're all going to be judged a lot on what happens in November and December. And we had a tremendous league last year with a lot of turnover. Guys going pros, uh, great seniors in the league. Uh, we had some injuries to some players as well, and so you get judged by that. And I thought we had a pretty good record, actually, and uh, it, it, as a league, but it wasn't, it, it didn't measure up. And, and then, you know, there's, there's always going to be a lot of hype about what's, uh, <coughs> what, 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 what teams are getting the most hype early, and it's just, they, it doesn't go away. And so as a result, I just told everybody, was, that question was that, just wait. The level of coaching in this league, the level of resources in this league, the, the level of talent in this league, it will come to the top by the end of the year. But you got more recent, he averaged two points a game last year. I mean, he, he's just, he's 19 years old. You got to watch this guy. The, DJ averaged the same. There's a process that people go through to develop their teams. And uh, we, had some, we had a lot of good seniors last year that graduated, and a lot of guys are just waiting in the wings. And it may have not showed in November and December, uh, it's showing in March. Questions, please? Raise your hand. We've got a few minutes left. Right here, right here. <coughs> she's, she's coming. <coughs> yeah, this is for Derek. And I guess I'll go back after the Ohio State game at home, leading the Michigan State game. And I think it was you were quoted saying that you looked at yourself, why not me take this team, put this team on uh, my back? Has your, your leadership skills, even though you're a four-year starter, ramped up significantly from when you were a freshman? Derek? Um, well, of course, since I was a freshman, I didn't have to. My job was easy, just run the team and you know, get guys involved. But you know, now at this stage, it's, it's a lot more. And um, you know, credit to a lot of guys I work with to help me um, work on my leadership. So now at this point, I just feel like, um, you know, why not have this team have my identity, just a determination and, you know, just a will to win. And, um, you know, I'm just happy I was able to have, uh, you know, a thumbprint on this team's identity and, you know, want to keep it rolling. Right here, Pat. Uh, John, you alluded to the, I guess, the, the decisions you guys made as a staff about uh, how to maybe change some things once the game started and, and maybe whether it's isolating Mo or DJ. Could you kind of walk through the process of, of how that it, came about? We run a lot of we run a bunch of action. Some of it is, is non ball screen, some of it is ball screen. So we just we just throw it out there. You throw it out there and then you read how they're doing it. So as we could read how to do it, now we're trying every four minutes we get to 
we get to huddle up and we talk about it and then we try to the game we try to get the game to evolve in the way that they're playing us. Now now Louisville could have changed in the middle and then, then we gotta reevaluate. But if there's a process we go through to figure out how people are playing us, uh, to then apply the right type of action. And so that was happening. And they, they and, and we we had expected they may switch ball screens because their their big guys are long and they're athletic and, and they're gonna try that just as Derek said to me on the went, man, coach, those guys are long and he's shooting over them. So, but once we knew that, then there was some action we were going to delete, and then we're going to go with some other stuff. And part of that is just post-up action. One, one last question. <laughs> uh, for, all, for all the players, um, a couple of days ago, Rick Pitino called you guys the Golden State Warriors after you, you know, bombarded uh, Oklahoma State with those three-pointers. Uh, today, you beat Louisville, missing 11 of 17 three-pointers. So, do you think that kind of shortchanged what you guys are all about, just a free-flowing shooting team? Mo, we'll start with you. Um, well, we always believe in ourselves, not only from a shooting perspective, also from a de on the defensive end and um, in the paint as well. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy. I just said that to Coach Bieland. We only shot six threes today and we won. So it's, it's awesome. We play gritty basketball, and um, I think we can be proud of that. DJ? Um, <clears throat> I think it just shows the versatility of this team. Um, it, with our offense, it's kind of just pick your poison, like I've been saying. Um, and today we didn't knock down a three, so I don't know. We worked and we did other things to put the ball in the hole, and it was effective. And I also think just on the other end, um, they had 10 offensive rebounds in the first half and limited them to five in the second half um, was a big key for us to pull out this victory. So. Derek? Uh, yeah, pretty much what those guys said. Uh, we just found another way to win. And like I said, that's been our identity in the last you know month and a half, just finding different ways to win. Um, you know, if it's whether it's the three ball or whether it's not, it's just, you know, just us finding multiple different ways to win and taking what the game gives us. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, we'll begin with an opening statement from Coach Patino, and then we'll go to the uh, anybody up here. So, well, obviously the team is very disappointed. Uh, we lost, but as always, unless you win it all, it's always going to be that disappointment. We we played a good game, especially in the first half. We played terrific defense. Um, we've lost games this year, not because of effort, because we've these guys have given me a plus effort the whole year. We lose games because mentally. We have a very difficult time focusing in on what to do defensively and cost us the game tonight by giving, constantly giving them their right hand, which has to be taken away. That being said, they made a lot of big shots. Give them credit. Uh, we wanted to hold the three down. We did it. We wanted to attack inside. We did it. And um, they were just a better team down the stretch. They have a little more experience, but I was glad to see that Tony got a chance to play in the NCAA and, and get some experience. Uh, that's why he came in as a fifth-year senior, and Mango's been a Joy to coach for the um, 11 years he's been here. Okay, questions please. Raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. Questions please, right here. Yeah. Uh, Mango, maybe just talk. It was, uh, they got a lot done inside, but you guys were trying to get out and, and stop the three. What, how did that, uh, how tough a challenge is that to try and cover everything? Because they seem to do it all well. Question for Mango. Uh, I mean, because they shoot the ball so well, uh, our plan was to basically try to switch everything. And once they seen that, uh, they try to take advantage of our guards. And, uh, you know, the big fella, he did a good job of, you know, footwork and just, you know, getting into the paint. But, uh, you know, 
like Cody said, you know, we did, you know, a poor job of giving them the uh, strong hand, and uh, which was our goal to basically eliminate that, and uh, we didn't do such a good job on that. Questions? Right back here. Rick, did, did, Mar did, Moritz, un did Moritz surprise you with being able to get that much done, even though obviously you guys were, you know, focusing elsewhere on defense? Did, did well, we made some bad switches by not communicating. Mango was trying to tell the guards to get over it so we didn't have to switch. We wanted to switch going toward the perimeter, not going toward the basket. So we made some poor switches. And, um, you know, probably the weakness of our team this year has been our defense. Our offense in the last 10 days or two weeks has gotten significantly better because we worked inside to out. But our backcourt defense getting over screens has probably been the biggest weakness this year. And we've got to improve in that area. Right here. This question's for Rick. You talked about the defense in the second half. Was, was that the difference in the game? Was it something Michigan was doing in the second half that might have been well, different? They made, they made some shots at crucial moments, but we, we did, played really good defense in the first half because we switched intelligently and we took away their strong hand. You have to take away Michigan. They're, they're a dominant right-hand team. And we, we concentrated on taking away uh, Walton because he's been on such a run, his right hand. Then we gave him his right hand on a couple of crucial plays. And that's what it comes down to. You know, it's a couple of crucial plays. You know, um, we made a couple of really big mistakes. Mango made one fouling with three seconds to go there, uh, giving the guy the right hand from the elbow, giving the right hand a drive, and dang not challenging the shot on a layup when we did give him the right hand. But that's really, you know, as a coach, you can never complain when you give great effort. Uh, it's been all year, it's been very tough on, on the whole team to focus in mentally on the little things that make a great defensive team. That being said, we played the toughest schedule in the nation, finished 25 and nine, couldn't be prouder of the guys. But going forward, we, we've got to learn what de how important defense is because it's a, with the game on the line, we broke down defensively, not offensively, because we shot a good percentage in the game and did a lot of good things offensively. Questions? Do we have anything else? One more, right here. I mean, it may not be the, the correct time, so I apologize, but Mango, if you can maybe look back for a little bit as your time. I know Rick jokes about the 11 years at, at Louisville, but uh, it has been a long run for you, and unfortunately, it comes to an end tonight. Mango? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I have no regrets at all. Uh, I mean, tonight's game, uh, Coach is being honest about, you know, just focusing in, uh, in you know, key things towards the end of the game. And, uh, you know, we did a poor job on that tonight. And, uh, you know, it just started off with me, you know, when it came up to three seconds left, uh, poor, you know, poor foul, especially coming from a fifth year senior and a leader as well. Uh, you know, that's a pretty misjudgment by me. And, uh, you know, but other than that, I, I feel like the team fought, they played real hard. Uh, they gave, you know, their teammates and coach uh, everything they had. But, uh, you know, we just fell short. Right here. Tony, you uh, found yourself in long stretches of the game against one of the hotter point guards in the country. What was it like to just be a part of all this? Question for Tony. Um, it was just a great experience. Uh, I couldn't have asked for anything more. Just trying to make it tough for him. I know he was kind of the head of the snake for their team, and just trying to make it tough. He didn't shoot that well, so. It wasn't enough. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you.